Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. Today with this video, we are going to start the Ethernet series, where we will cover all sort of protocols. This video will cover the initialization of the Ethernet port, and in the end, we will do the ping test. Before I start the video, I want to share some important information. So first listen to the information, and then decide for yourself. After I saw some different MCUs, I found out that there are four major things with the Ethernet. Some of the boards have Media Independent Interface, MII, while the others have reduced MII. Other than this, some MCUs let us configure the memory in the Cube MX, while others don't. These four things are mixed up with each other, so your board could have MII with memory config, or without it. Or the RMII with memory config, or without it. I am going to make two videos for the initialization of the hardware itself. One of the boards I have supports MII with memory configuration, while the other have RMII without memory configuration. But again, since we don't know what you could have, watch both the videos carefully. Let's assume for now, that I don't know which one do I have. We will find out eventually, as we progress in the video. Now let's see the problems you are going to face. Most of you are going to face hard fault issues. I know this, I have seen the watch time in my videos, and there are very few who actually watch till the end. Let me be clear here, the half fault you are going to get is because of the memory issue. And I am not going to address any comment regarding hard fault errors. Probably I will delete them too. So if you don't want the hard fault, watch the video carefully, and listen to every explanation. The next problem is the memory issue. If you have less than 80 kilobytes of flash, and don't know about QSPI, then don't watch the video. I will eventually make some videos about booting from QSPI, you have to wait till then. Same goes for the RAM. Last but not least. Watch the previous videos about memory configuration, and MPU configurations first. Don't comment about not understanding the flash script, or MPU part. So if you are okay with everything, let's start the video. I am using H745 discovery board, and here is the Ethernet port on it. Let's give some name to the project, and click finish. By the time it configures the cube, let's take a look at the schematics. Here is the Ethernet module, and as you can see, it have the MII connection type. Remember that the MCU can support both types, but what is connected with your hardware, that matters. Alright let's keep it open, and go back to our Cube MX. First things first, let's configure the clocks. I am selecting external high speed crystal to provide the clock. Make sure you use the correct crystal frequency at the input. Let's configure for the maximum frequency. 400 MHz is enough. The clocks are fine now. Note that the cache are disabled by default, and I am leaving it like this. Let's go to the Ethernet tab. Enable the module. I have MII type connection on this board, so I am going to choose MII. We will configure the parameters in a while, but first take a look at the GPIO. The Cube MX mostly configures the wrong pins by default, so make sure that you choose the right ones. Match every pin with the schematics. In this case, they are all configured correctly, so it's fine. If any pin is incorrect, 
you can click on the correct pin, and choose the function. The incorrect one will disable automatically. Now comes the very important part, memory configuration. Here we have some buffer lengths, and their addresses to configure. These RX and TX are the DMA descriptors, and if you remember the DMA issues with cache, I think you got an idea about the part MPU is going to play here. Notice that here the cube MX is letting me configure the memory locations, so this is the memory config type. I can leave everything to default here, but just for the sake of explanation, I am going to choose another memory location. Let's see the reference manual first. Go to the memory organization, to find more about memory distribution. Here I have a lot of SRAMs. The main code is organized in the Axi SRAM, and let's say I don't want to touch it. I have few more options to choose from, and I am going with SRAM 1. This is 130 kilobytes in size, and it's perfect for the job. SRAM 1 start at the address of 3 million, and that's where I am going to put the RX descriptor. Now the length of descriptors is set to 4 by default, so let's leave it like that. But I don't know how many bytes does one DMA descriptor takes. If it's 24 bytes, then the total size for RX descriptor would be 96 bytes, but if it's 32 bytes, then the size will be 128 bytes. Let's go with the higher range, and I am assuming that the each DMA descriptors is going to occupy 32 bytes. So the memory occupied by each descriptor will be 128 bytes. Now we need to put the address of TX descriptor at an offset of 128 bytes. And therefore the address for TX descriptor will become 3,080. Now comes the RX buffer. The total space occupied by both the descriptors is 256 bytes, so we will keep the RX buffer at that offset. So the RX buffer address will be 3,100,000. The length of the RX buffer is 1,524, and I will explain this in a while. So everything is set for the Ethernet, now let's enable the lightweight IP. OK, it's not letting me enable this. This is because the cache are disabled. So let's go and enable the cache first. Now we can enable it. Let's configure this. First option is if we want to enable the DHCP. Enabling dynamic host will assign the dynamic IP address to our module. But we will disable it, and assign the IP ourselves. This will be a static IP address, and it's easier for us to test with right now. So let's assign some IP address, netmask, and the gateway. Leave everything to default here, and we will go to the second option. Here this option is for free RTOS, and since we are not using it, it's disabled. Next we need to set the memory pool size. Let's keep it 10 kilobytes for now. It's enough for our current application. Now comes another memory assignment. Let's see our memory distribution by far. The memory starts at 3 million, and here we have the DMARX descriptor. Then at an offset of 128 bytes, we have DMATX descriptor. 
Again at another offset of 128 bytes, we have Rx buffer. I forgot the size of Rx buffer. The length was 1524. The size will be Rx buffer length, multiplied by Rx descriptor length. The Rx buffer is 6096 bytes in total. The address here will be 80. Here is 100. And the address at the end of Rx buffer will be 18D0. Totally they take 6352 bytes. Now we need to assign the address to this 10 kilobytes of heap. So we will assign it here. But not exactly to the very next position, let's round it up a little. 2000 seems fine. The address for the heap pointer will be 3,002,000. So this is our entire memory range starting from 3 million, and going up to 4,800. A total of 18 kilobytes of RAM. Out of this, 10 kilobytes is used by the heap, around 6 kilobytes is used by these buffers, and then there is some space in the middle. So that completes our memory allocation for now. Let's see the rest of the configuration. Leave the rest of them as it is. We don't need to set up any of these. Here make sure the hardware checksum is enabled. And in this platform setting, both are set as LAN 8742. That completes our configuration for the LWIP, and now comes the MPU. If you haven't watched the MPU configuration videos, don't complain about this part. Let's select the MPU privileged access only. Enable the MPU region. Our base address is going to be the address of the SRAM1, where everything starts. Enter the base address here. Now the size of the region. We are using a total of 18 kilobytes of this RAM, so we need to choose 18 kilobytes. After 16 we have 32, so select the 32 kilobits size. Now comes the configuration. I hope you remember this picture from the memory attributes video. As we are using the DMA descriptors in the normal memory region, we need to make it non-cacheable. So I think this one should work. The text value is 1, and it is non-cacheable, non-bufferable, but shareable. Alright let's set the region. Permit the access. Set the text as 1, and set the rest of the configuration. So that's it, we have configured the MPU also. Click save to generate the project. Let's build the code once to see the memory details. If you notice here, the RAM D2 is still unused, even after we have defined the buffers in the RAM. This is because we still need to configure the flash script. Before we do that, open this ethernetif.c file. This is where everything is configured, even the pin connections. But here we are only interested in these definitions. We are using GNUC, so this is our region. 
Here the sections are already defined, we just need to define them in the flash script. If you haven't watched the memory configuration video yet, we watch it first, or else you are on your own. I am going to call it LWIP section. Let's define the memory locations for all those sections individually. Make sure you use the same locations that you have used in the Cube MX. I hope you remember this from the memory management video. All the sections should be same as they are defined in the ethernetif.c file. So I have defined them, and now if we build the code, you can see the D2 RAM have some space occupied. We can see the locations in the memory details. Apparently the DMA descriptors are taking 96 bytes each, but that's alright. Since we have given them the space of 128 bytes, so I guess it's fine. So this completes the configuration part. Now let's write some code. I am disabling the second core related functions, you don't need to worry about this. Write the exact same code that I am writing. Ethernet if input handles the incoming data. It determines the type of packet received, and calls the appropriate input function. This is just to test the ping. Let's debug this. Set a breakpoint here, and run it. This is to check if there is any hard fault due to memory issue. So we hit the breakpoint, and everything is fine. Now we will let it run freely. And we are going to ping to the IP address. Let me reset it once. Alright, it's working pretty good. Our static IP address is responding well. The initialization of the hardware is complete, and we can go for some protocols now. This is it for the video. Make sure you watch the another video, which will cover the RMII with no memory configuration in CubeMX. You can download the code from the link in the description. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.